So good afternoon. My name is Jean-Michel Blanquer. I'm the Director General for Schools in the French Ministry of uh, National Education. And I'm um, very happy and very honored to have the responsibility to give the floor to a very uh, interesting in invitees in this, uh, uh, in this um, table about um, preventing dropout. Um, we all think that dropout is one of the main problems of the school systems all over the world. It's maybe a revelator of the failures of our systems. Uh, but tr dropout means a lot of things. We have a lot of roots for dropout, a lot of causes. Uh, in particular, you have social uh, reasons, but sometimes uh, those factors are linked to the problems of our educational systems. Um, again, dropout is also um, a, a revelator of problems before school, problems in school and problems after school. We are going to speak about that with persons from all over the world, someone from Canada, someone from Cuba, and someone from Africa, Guinea exactly, but who works on all Africa. In uh, uh, a minute, I'm going to present them, three women. Aisha Badialo. She's the former Minister for Education in Guinea, but she's right now the uh, responsible of the Chair Forum of African Women Educationalist, FAO, and uh, uh, one of the responsibles of the Réseau pour l'Education pour Tous en Afrique, uh, named Repta. Uh, she's involved in education for all and in lifelong learning uh, education, specifically for girls and, and women. I call also uh, Caroline Acker. At the beginning of her, of her career, she was a nurse, or she is a nurse, uh, but she, uh, she, uh, she is going to explain uh, that she found pathways to education, which is uh, at the center of our problematic today. Uh, she represents a non-governmental organization concerned about high school dropout uh, in impoverished communities. And I call right now Mercedes Zamora Collazo. She's um, from Cuba. She's an academic uh, advisor for, of the Literacy and Education Chair for Young and Adults in the IPLAC, which is the Latin American and Caribbean Pedagogical Institute. And uh, she's uh, responsible of Yo Si Puedo, uh, which is a Cuban program of literacy uh, used in, not only in Cuba, but in many countries in, in the region and in uh, some parts of the world. She's going to speak about that, of course. So we can begin the, our discussion. And uh, I think that we have to first discuss about a definition of dropout, because dropout is, uh, has a lot of uh, uh, features, a lot of uh, uh, manifestations. Um, we have dropout at any age. We have dropout drop out in, in very different contexts. So it's interesting to see the definition of dropout and also uh, to see what we do to prevent dropout and what we do when there is dropout to uh, get back uh, the, the children or the young persons in the, in the school system or in the social integration in special structures. So maybe we could have a, a first discussion about the definition of dropout, uh, because I, I think it's an important uh, point. And maybe, see, Aisha, you could begin by the, your definition of, of dropout. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dropout is due to many factors. These factors are multiple. They interlink. It is, it is a process rather than one single event. For instance, in Africa, because I'm going to focus myself on sub-Saharan Africa, dropout is due to social factor, social cultural factors, and it is also due to the education system itself. If I look into the facts and figures for Sub-Saharan Africa, every single year, 10 million kids drop out. 9% 9 million, 9 drop out uh, before finishing the first year. The repetition rate is 13%. 
It is as simple as that. Now, if you want to tell me to tell you right now what to do to, to bring, I mean, to, to, to um, prevent dropout, I will tell you that we have to work on these two factors. The community factor, which is social cultural. That depends on poverty and patriarchal attitudes. Poverty, because when the parents are very poor, they cannot sustain the education of their children. Therefore, there is a possibility to give bursaries to the kids. This is what Farway has done, and it, it is in uh, 37 countries. We have given bursaries to, starting 2003 up to 2007, 146,000 kids 30% were boys, had these bursaries. It has helped them to come to school. And as far as patriarchal uh, attitudes is con are concerned, we had to do some advocacy at the community level to prevent parents from marrying their girls early. Because they used to marry them before they are 18, which is in fact against the law, and also to bring the g girls to school. We li did link up with other NGOs. These other NGOs would give grants to the parents so that they will uh, develop other projects to have money. We were working also with the uh, PTAs, you know, parent, teachers, uh, associations, involving them in, uh, in the management of the school. This is for the social cultural factors. As far as the education sector is concerned, it is important to have schools, adequate schools, enough schools near the home so that parents will send the kids, especially girls, because if it is very far, the girls will not come. And these schools have to be secure. They have to be safe. You have to have water and sanitation. You have to have infirmary. And in this infirmary, it is important to have malaria, anti-malaria pills, deworming pills, and also sanitary pad, emergency sanitary pads for the girls. And it is important to have them at least one meal a day. It makes a difference. So that you will solve the question of hunger and health. And as far as teachers is concerned, we all said, since yesterday we have been hearing that teachers are the key. What FAWE has done is to give them uh, in-service teacher training, which is called uh, uh, to be, for them to be gender responsive, because the teachers have to cater for boys and girls, so that the dynamic within the classroom will allow girls and boys to participate. It will retain girls, especially. And also, um, now, learning materials and curriculum, they have to be developed using the context of the learner. Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't talk to the learner, it will not interest the, the, the kids. If you talk, for instance, in Africa, you talk about counting apples, instead of oranges or mangoes, it doesn't talk to them. Well, you also have a lot of gender violence at school. To prevent it, what FAWE has done is to empower the kids through what we call TUSEME. It's a program where boys and girls come together, see themselves, the, the, the questions, the problems they have, find themselves a solution, write a, a drama out of it, play, and it, it has helped a lot. Now the teachers and the boys are respecting the girls. So learning to live together, this is what, Fa, what uh, Fawe has done through Tusemi, and it has helped a lot. And you have another also way of uh, making sure that uh, the school will be safe and secure is to have a fence. You know, in Africa, it's not that easy, but it, it has helped a lot. I think I'll stop there. I'll come back later.
Thank you. Thank you very much. It's already very rich because we see uh, different factors of dropout and first the material reasons and then the, what we can call the intellectual or mental reasons, uh, which can be, some of them can be different and some of, some of, some of them can be the same as uh, what we can find in Europe or in, in North America. So maybe, Karin, you can tell us about your experience and uh, your definition of dropout and, and your perception of the factors of dropout. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as was mentioned, I'm, uh, my background is, is uh, nursing, so I came at this problem from the healthcare perspective. I didn't know we had a dropout problem. I was running the Regent Park Community Health Center and we were providing primary care, early years, very large early years programs, community garden, community development, housing work, safety work. In the largest and oldest social housing project in Canada. Very, very low income community, extremely poor. Now, we were increasing the resources of the health center. The, the organization in the 90s grew from, say, 2.2 2 million to about 6 million over five years, from 28 staff to 68 staff. But what was going on was an increase in violence in the community. There was one murder, then two murders, then three murders. The year before we developed this program, in the year 2000, there were nine murders right in that community. The kids were selling drugs, involved with gangs, and I was going crazy. I felt all we were was a Band-Aid, and it wasn't logical that we kept investing more resources in this community, and instead of it getting better, it was getting worse. So that's when we started to look further, and it was a vision. We developed a vision called Community Succession, and this vision meant that the young people growing up in this community would become the future doctors, nurses, social worker, executive director, dentist, etc., of the health center. And it was that vision, and using action research, we did focus groups with the community, with the parents, with the students, with the teachers, we gathered all kinds of data, and we did something that had never been done before. We asked the school board, what is the dropout rate for the kids living in our community? In Canada, you get an average. The average doesn't tell you anything, because as soon as you overlay income on that, you see the, the difference. We had a 56% high school dropout rate, and we learned that only 20% of the kids were going on to post-secondary education. When I learned we had a 56% dropout rate, I understood the despair, the hopelessness, the teen pregnancy, the violence, and we had to do something about that. And I was driven by a sense of social justice to correct this problem, and it wasn't easy, but using action research, we learned that, and this is true, so far we have replicated this program in 11 different communities, and all of these low-income kids have the same experience. They lack academic support, they lack social support, they don't have money to buy a bus ticket to get to school, never mind to buy lunch at school or even clothes to wear. And they have no hope that they can go on to post-secondary education. So that's what we had to turn around. They lived within a culture of failure. So we needed to turn that around somehow. And um, I think I'll stop there for now. Thank you very much. We will come back to those uh, factors to see w what are the solutions or the, the pathway to the, the pathways to solution. Um, so now I give the floor to Mercedes Zamora. Uh, if you want to tell us your definition of dropout and the causes of dropout when there is dropout. <laughs> well, we don't have this problem in Cuba. 
But um, according with my experience in different countries that we have worked, there is, uh, from my point of view, when we talk about dropout, the people think in the student and the teachers. But it's not exactly only these factors, the one that can prevent dropout. Because I think that dropout is the, the reason of lack or enough attention to, to different factors. But when we have dropout, it's because the system of influences that should act in the students fail. And it means for me, not only teacher's role, but the role of the community, the family, mainly the parents' responsibility. And education is a factor that can contribute to eliminate this. That's why for us, it's important adult education. If we have illiterate parents, what can they do with their children? Which is the concept that they have of the importance of education. And there are many factors in the case of dropout. One case is there are geography results in some cases because the school is so far from the student that they drop out. In other cases, social uh, reasons, because there are students that do not have solved their basic needs. And in other cases, the cultural reasons, because they receive in the school something that is not much with them, culture and they don't feel that is their school. They not identify that what they learn in the school is what they need, and that is another problem that we have. And financial aspect, because in some cases, like, like my colleague uh, explained, they don't have possibility to go to school because they need to work to survive. That's why we devote a lot of time for adult education because that is one of the points that can contribute to prevent dropout. In the case of my country, since the, uh, since the moment that we finished the literacy campaign, people that were at that time illiterate and become literate with the campaign, some year later, they get a professional status. And of course, it helped in the conscience of the people the importance of study. And they send the student to school because they know that it's the only way that the student can improve the way of life. <laughs>